Hello, you're watching News Mongolia on MNB World, and I'm your host, Jarrat Mad of Shinjarrat. Our top stories for today. The concert commemorates Giacomo Puccini's 100th anniversary of his death and pays tribute to Mongolia. Ulaanbaatar Dialogue organized on June 6th to 7th. Mongolian artists participating in North Art International Art Exhibition. For the news, stay tuned. The ninth edition of the Ulaanbaatar Dialogue commenced on June 6 in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. This annual international conference on Northeast Asian security is co-hosted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Institute for Strategic Studies under the National Security Council of Mongolia. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Patsitsak Batmukh, inaugurated the conference underlining the pivotal role of dialogue, collaboration and mutual comprehension in addressing the region's issues and obstacles. So these days, whatever happens in one part of the globe has an impact uh, everywhere. Were there to be, for example, problems on the Korean Peninsula, that would have a major impact on Europe, let alone Mongolia, the United States and elsewhere. So we need to look after our world together. Uh, secondly, uh, what we're seeing is the, the danger of the re-emergence of bloc politics. Uh, and, and some people say a new Cold War. Uh, amongst the, the, the big countries in the region, you have Russia, China, North Korea on one side, you have South Korea, Japan and the United States on the other. Uh, that's a dangerous development. And one of the reasons I'm here, one of the reasons I appreciate the work of the Ulan Batter Dialogue is it's trying to bring people together rather than separate them. And I certainly think that in terms of the Korean Peninsula, a neutral country, in quotation marks like Mongolia, is probably going to do more to help us bridge the gap uh, and get people talking than if you want statements coming out of Washington or Pyongyang. Mongolia has successfully hosted the Ulaanbaatar Dialogue annually since 2014. There was a two-year gap during the period of the COVID-19 global pandemic. The fact that we are having this conference is a tangible result itself. This conference does not aim to settle disputes or conflicts between the countries in the region. Instead, countries in the conflict should use this opportunity to increase understanding and build mutual trust. This year's agenda encompasses discussions on various topics including security challenges and opportunities in the region, multilateral cooperation in Northeast Asia, climate change and security challenges, secure and affordable energy transition, and developing sustainable and resilient value chains for critical energy transition minerals. Climate change is driven by greenhouse emissions. Some developed countries have adopted strategies of creating special funds and later using those to fight and mitigate climate change and support affected countries. I really do see youth engagement in climate initiatives and of course other initiatives across the spectrum key in facilitating sustainability. Um, there's many points to this, but the first will be that it's quite simple. Young people and children will be the ones inheriting this world and will be the ones living in the future that we are currently building with the decisions and the actions that we take today. Um, so young people and children being represented in these spaces and their insights being incorporated into a lot of the decisions are a no-brainer, I think. It's a very key element that we need. And, you know, some may say that young people um, are, should be more focused on capacity building and um, gaining more experience. But based on my experience on um, really inviting, in, inviting young people into traditional decision-making spaces and also carving out new spaces, I mean, young people come with a wealth of experience and expertise and provide a different perspective that may have been marginalized in the past. So, especially in terms of climate change, where we need to consider a more transdisciplinary approach and a more comprehensive approach, again, that fosters collective action, I think these new perspectives must be taken into account and in a way to foster more intergenerational solidarity. 
Scheduled from June 6 to 7 of this year, the Ulaanbaatar Dialogue draws over 200 participants, including representatives and scholars from more than 30 countries, 10 international organizations, as well as diplomatic missions in Mongolia and governmental bodies within Mongolia. The Ulaanbaatar Dialogue epitomizes Mongolia's commitment to peaceful, open and independent foreign policy framework, serving as a recurrent forum to discuss regional security matters in Northeast Asia, it regularly attracts attendees from nations across the region, the Asia-Pacific, North America and Europe. A concert dedicated to the 100th anniversary of the Giacomo Puccini's death was held at the Mario Verdone Auditorium of the Tauri Majorana Music College in Rome, Skidonia, in collaboration with the Cultural Association, New Opera Dimensions, and the Mongolian National Broadcaster. Details from our MNB reporter in Europe, Batbayer. The event was under the patronage of the Lazio region with the president of the Culture, Arts and Sports Commission, Mario Luciano Crea, delivering an opening address highlighting the potential for collaboration in arts and tourism between Italy and Mongolia. Our greetings from Rome and our entire region to the people of Mongolia. The institutions have to take responsibility to increase the value of relations between countries and develop an intercultural relationship to make sure all possible resources of both countries will gain even more in value. From our side, we have the responsibility and duty to support these relations. And on top of that, we have to sustain these exchanges so that all citizens may benefit from this. What concerns Italy is that we have incredible resources that are admired by the entire world. Nature, history, arts and culture. I know Mongolia too has great resources and that's why I am convinced that it's possible to make an incredible project of exchanges in the field of arts, culture and tourism. Once again, thank you and we send you our warmest greetings. Thank you for participating in this wonderful event at the Itori Majorana Music College Auditorium in Gidonia. I am delighted to have found this cultural connection between Italy and Mongolia, a country that fascinates me greatly. I follow and promote the website www.mongolia.it and have contributed to the publication of two books, Reindeer Men and Leopards of the Snow both symbols of Mongolia. I have always wanted to visit the Gobi Desert and hope to do so soon. Too many ancient animal fossils have been taken from Mongolia, and the National Geographic report suggests they should be returned. These remains are masterpieces and should be preserved in the Museum of National History in Ulaanbaatar. I firmly believe in the commercial and business relations between Italy and Mongolia. Next year marks the 55th anniversary of our diplomatic relations. Italy can bring technological advancements to Mongolia, especially to address air pollution in the capital. I have always worked on the ecological issues both in Italy and abroad. My sincere thanks to the Embassy of Mongolia for providing the videos for our Turandot concert today. Hamid Sardar's photo of a girl with the deer cub is stunning. The reindeer people of Mongolia face significant challenge due to restricted migration routes. The concert featured international singers such as Italian-Mongolian mezzo-soprano Ayana Sambo, Australian-English tenor Thomas Birch, and Ukrainian soprano Yuliana Binidovska, accompanied by pianist Victoria Khalilova and the Torre Majorana Flute Orchestra under Maestro Alessandro Fratta. They performed Puccini's famous areas from operas like La Boheme, Gianni Schicchi, Tosca and Turandot. It is my great pleasure to be here today to speak about the exceptional singer Ayana Sambo, my dear friend and collaborator for many years. I also extend my warmest regards to the ambassador of Mongolia in Italy, whom I had the pleasure of meeting. I want to remind everyone about the Roma International Piano Competition, now in its 33rd year, which I have dedicated myself to organizing. On the 25th anniversary, we received the golden medal from the President of the Republic of Italy. We have had young pianists from all over the world, except Mongolia. It would be a great pleasure to welcome talented young Mongolian pianists to our competition. 
The competition will be held from November 3rd to November 16th, with the application deadline in early October. It is crucial to reach schools, art colleges, and universities in Mongolia to spread the word. We have welcomed young musicians from all over the world and look forward to including Mongolia in our global community. The event also celebrated the interpretation of Turandot as the story of a Mongolian princess Hutulon. Studies have shown that Puccini's opera was inspired by Hutulon, the ice princess, whose story was chronicled by Marco Polo. Ayana Sambo's performance as Turandot was a highlight described as absolutely magnificent and superb by the audience. Ayana Sambo, a founder of the Cultural Association New Opera Dimensions, has represented Mongolia in Italy for over 20 years and was specially invited to interpret Turandot. According to researchers and historians, Princess Turandot wasn't a Chinese princess, but Mongolian princess Hutulun. This is the first time the opera is defined as about a Mongolian princess. Sadly, Puccini couldn't complete the Turandot opera before his death. This year, on November 29th, the opera will be officially announced as an opera about a Mongolian princess. There will be officials from Mongolia taking part in this event. The concert included video projections provided by the Embassy of Mongolia in Italy showcasing traditional Mongolian culture and photos by filmmaker Hamid Sardar. Special guests included Marcello Crudelli, president of the Roma International Piano Competition, who invited Mongolian pianists to participate. Post-concert VIP guests expressed interest in promoting Mongolian culture in Italy and exploring collaboration opportunities in the arts, tourism, and environmental fields. The event was sponsored by Sester & Co., a frequent supporter of Mongolian cultural events in Italy. Now let's take a look at Mongolian current affairs. The 25th Nordart International Art Exhibition opened in Budalsdorf, Germany on June 1, 2024. Nordart, one of Europe's top contemporary art exhibitions, is celebrating its 25th anniversary by showcasing award-winning artists. It features 200 top art pieces from 3,000 submissions worldwide each year. Contemporary Mongolian art has been a part of Nordart since 2015. This year, in honor of the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Mongolia and Germany, the 5th Mongolian Pavilion features works from 21 artists and will run until October 6, 2024. Highlights include pieces by Ocherbolt Dulgong and Patdochtuch, among others, displayed in the 80,000 square meter garden and wagon remise. The Mongolian Pavilion is organized by the Culture, Arts and Media Project Management and Consultation NGO, with support from the Cultural Ambassador of Mongolia to Germany and various Mongolian and German ministries and embassies. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's take a look at currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We will see you tomorrow with more news and updates. Goodbye.